As a physician who believes in medical choice, and with that, vaccine choice, I often get questions from patients or comments about them about their various takes about vaccines and their rationales as to why they may not want to take them. One of them has to do with concern about the use of aborted fetal tissue in vaccines. So let's talk about it. Hey everybody, I'm Dr. David, a pediatrician in Tampa, Florida. Uh, in my belief of, of vaccine choice, medical choice, I'm also a big believer in education and facilitating people, making sure that they're getting the most accurate information. Um, certainly as part of our medical practice, we give vaccines in our practice, but we do believe that a parent ultimately has a right as well as a responsibility to do their homework, to see what they want to do, and then to discuss it with us. And, you know, we do discuss this in an open, non-threatening manner, which I do realize is not the way it goes in most pediatric offices. Now, somebody recently asked this question about the topic of vaccines and aborted fetal tissue. And I do say, please keep the questions coming. I really do appreciate being able to connect with you and be able to answer things that you do um, want to know about. Um, if you like hearing about this stuff, um, or I guess even if you don't, subscribe. Pass this information along to people. We want to grow this channel. We want to grow the information. We want to get it up on the algorithms. And of course, if you want to support what we're really doing, what we're doing, please do become a Patreon member. That's very helpful. Okay. Now, in terms of, and with this episode, we're going to be talking about if aborted fetal tissue is currently being used in vaccines, why fetal tissue and which fetal tissue has been used in the development of vaccines in the past, and also about religious beliefs um, for people who um, who hold to them. So as far as um, starting off, it's important to understand that aborted uh, tissue is and fetal tissue, they're not synonymous. Yes, um, all aborted tissue is fetal tissue, but not all fetal tissue is aborted tissue. As a clear example of that, fetal stem cells. There's no abortion that takes place. There's an extraction that takes place, but there's no, um, there's no abortion. There's no um, um, termination uh, um, happening because of that. Now, also, it's to be another thing clear. There is no aborted tissue being used to make any vaccine at all. Okay, I realize that people have heard otherwise, but that is not true. No aborted tissue is being used. Okay, now aborted tissue was used in the original development, the original lines of the cell lines that were used for a few of the vaccines, not for most of them, but for a few. And we'll talk about that. And, and the reason why that was done is because um, the originally the um, the development of different cell lines was used to grow the viruses that would become used in vaccines. So most vaccines, I'm not talking about messenger RNA vaccines. I'm talking about other vaccines um, where there is either um, where there's a part of the, the vaccine, uh, what we call an antigen that is taken from the full virus. So it's not a full virus. It's like a, like a particle from it. And that is then used um, to, to be injected into somebody to create an immune response against that protein in the virus. But since that virus has the protein, it attacks the virus as a whole. And that's how it eliminated. That's how people develop immunity to it. There's only way, two ways you can get immunity, either from having a wild disease or from a vaccine. Technically, you can also get it from your mom um, for the months after the cord's been cut because it was coming through. And of course, there are antibodies that are passed along in breast milk. But in terms of long-term memory against infections, those are the only two ways that it work. Now, um, as far as the fetal cell lines that were used in labs, what they then would do is they would take those cells and then they would um, grow them. They would replicate them. A ne generation, a next generation, next generation. So after that first aborted fetal tissue was used, that was it. The ne the cell lines down below, the next generations, they were then used in order to grow the virus, not the original aborted cells. That's why I'm saying there what that difference is. Okay. And so viruses, why is that done? Because viruses are naturally, they reproduce in cells. That's what they do. And of course, human viruses replicate best in human cells. That's why that's where they're mostly grown. Um, and now also to grow viruses in the vaccine, um, you know, the, the virus has to, um, in those cells has to replicate. And that tools, those tools for replication is also found within the cell, which allows that to happen. Now, there's not just any type of cell will uh, or even of a human origin cell would there be um that the viruses be able to grow in there would be certain types of cells that they found that a virus would grow best in 
Um, so um, now it was claimed that at first, um, and this is one of the issues I do have, but it was claimed um, at the time that the reason why fetal tissue was used is because they said it was the safest type of tissue because the, ster the womb is sterile and therefore you wouldn't have to worry about other viruses getting in there. That is just not a truthful statement. I've seen this used. I've seen it even written um, by um, people who write about um, why this, why it's not a problem um, for using such, why, for using um, other types of cells. But the reality is, yes, the fetus is the uh, the the placenta, the um, the womb is not sterile. Okay, how do we know that? Because babies can catch viruses, what we call congenital. Rubella. That's the main reason why vaccine is given against rubella in the first place. Not for catching German measles afterwards, but it because if a, if a woman were to catch rubella while she was pregnant, it can cause significant fetal um, malformations, brain, eyes, all types of things. CMV, another one that can cause congenital, malformation, um, um, congenital malformations that can impact the brain. So I don't know why they're still using that as a topic, but that's not a truthful statement. The womb is not sterile unless the woman herself is sterile. Okay, so um, now in terms of which vaccines were actually used for the, de used, developed from aborted tissue, okay? As I said, most of the vaccines out there never was part of this in the first place. The ones that are, are chickenpox, which is called the varicella or varivax vaccine. The rubella, so that's the R that's in the MMR vaccine. Hepatitis A and one version of the rabies virus. In addition, the COVID vaccine from Johnson and Johnson, not the messenger RNA one, but remember how there were for a while that there was um, this one that was an, adeno, an adenovirus grown, that was also using that, but that is no longer available in America. So that's not an option. If you want to get a COVID vaccine nowadays, you kind of have to get a messenger RNA one, but that's not no longer an issue. Okay. So which fetal cells were actually used going back? So, um, Everything was all with the exception of the Johnson and Johnson um, COVID vaccine. All of the vaccines were using what are called fibroblasts. So whenever you heard the word blast, it's kind of like an immature cell that can go on to develop other things. That's why like if you hear about blasts in a uh, leukemia or something like that, those are cells that are out of control, growing immature cells that don't follow the regular um ways of, of mature cells dividing, et cetera, like that. So they were fibroblasts that were used, okay? Just as an aside, the, uh, the COVID vaccine for Johnson & Johnson, that was using retinal cells, fetal retinal cells from the eye. Now, in terms of the fibroblasts, they were first originally obtained um, from two um, aborted electively um, terminations of two pregnancies in the early 1960s. So it's been What's that? More than 60 years since an aborted cell has been used for that. Um, further cells, as I said, were from the newer generations. Um, and, you know, the, and these fibroblasts, they can be regenerated 50 times before the cell dies. OK, so especially if you're taking a few generations down and then you replicate that 50 times and this one and this one and this one, because there's multiple generations, obviously, very quickly, you can develop a cell line several downs. that has many, many, many cells from there that why you don't have to go back to using aborted fetal tissue in the first place to make more because those other generations are there. Okay. Um, now, some of those cells also were able to be frozen. And so they just thaw them out when they're ready to make new batches um, to grow the viruses again. Um, and so eventually, um, once there are many generations down, they don't use them anymore. Now, just as an aside, so you know, these retinal cells that were used in the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, those were cells um, isolated from a, um, a terminated fetus in 1985. So even people who got that were still talking about many, many generations removed from that as well. Now, um, another th important thing, there are no fetal cells. There is no DNA in any of the vaccines. This is something that's scrubbed for. They check for it, et cetera. Um, it's, it's just not in the cells, okay? Um, and so um, now in terms of why some people, some people have said that they do not want to take vaccines or especially those that have um, that were developed from aborted fetal tissue due to religious beliefs, okay? As somebody who believes in freedom of religion, and that's very much part of my just freedom of humanity aspect of things. Of course, I'm going to respect a person's religious beliefs. I do point out that there is no organized religion, not even Catholicism, which has the strongest um, statements relative to abortion, say that 
um, that these vaccines that were originally developed from abor aborted tissue, since they no longer contain any aborted tissue in it. So no organization is saying that the vaccine should not be taken because of that. OK, um, it doesn't mean that a person can't have their own religious beliefs. You know, I I can't I frequently do say, hey, I'm a Jewish person. I don't eat pork, but I'll eat shellfish. That doesn't make me any less Jewish. That's my own belief. That's where um, where I'm comfortable in practicing my own religion. Now, um, some believe that, the, but some people also do say that they believe that the vaccine will harm their child, okay? And that their vax, their religious beliefs tell them they don't want to do something that will hurt their child. And I understand that as well. And I guess one could take that argument beyond the aborted fetal tissue aspect of things. Um, and that's somebody's call. That's, you know, but that's certainly some a reason why I've heard people say religiously, yeah, I, that's my religious doctrine to my own self, my freedom of my religion tells me I'm not going to do that. And again, that's their call. Okay. So overall, what's my take on taking this? This is your decision. This is a parent's decision. This is a family's decision. Um, and everybody should have a right to make that decision as to when the way the pros versus cons, you know, in my opinion, there clearly are benefits to being vaccinated. Um, I do believe that certain vaccines are more relevant than other vaccines, especially different times of life. But still, there, you know, the preponderance of the evidence is that vaccines do provide a health benefit to people. Now, of course, we've had conversations. What if you've had the disease before? That was a classic thing that happened with the COVID vaccine and why many people chose not to go ahead and um, get a vaccine because I had the vaccine already. I understand immunology 101. I now have immunity. Why would I take a vaccine if I have immunity? And I have no argument against that, um, no debate against that kind of concept overall, especially for what we now know about um, natural immunity relative to vaccine immunity and hybrid immunity for COVID. Okay, so ultimately, I guess we sum it up with the, with the, with one of our big you know taglines: your health, your choice. So uh, hopefully, uh, you learn something new, pass it along, and again, share it along, and hope you learn something. I was just very redundant there, wasn't I? I guess I was. <laughs> Have a great day.